Evaluate the limit of 7x plus 9 as x approaches 1. Alright, so as you can see, this is a function composed of two functions, right? So you have a function here and then a function here. So that means we can apply the addition law or addition theorem for limits. So we can break this down into the limit of 7x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 9 as x approaches 1. So we're breaking this down using the addition rule for um, evaluating limits. Now, this is a multiplication, so we can also break this down using the multiplication rule. So, we can write that as the limit of 7 as x approaches 1 times the limit of x as x approaches 1 plus the limit of 9 as x approaches 1. Now, limit of 7 as x approaches 1 is 7 because 7 is a constant. So, that's just 7 times the limit of x as x approaches 1 is x because this one's from the identity theorem. So, the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c, and in this case, our c is 1, so that's just gonna be 1, so 7 times 1, plus the limit of 9 as x approaches 1. Again, 9 is a constant, so that's just 9, equals, so 7 times 1 is 7, plus 9 is 16. So, therefore, the limit of 7x plus 9 as x approaches 1 equals 16. Evaluate the limit of 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. So, this is going to be the same. So, here we have three functions or three expressions that we can break up, okay? So, we can therefore write this as the limit of 2x squared as x approaches negative 1 minus the limit of 5x as x approaches negative 1 plus the limit of 1 as x approaches negative 1. Then, as you can see here, you have 2x squared. That's a multiplication of 2 and x squared. Here, that's 5 and x. So we can still break them down into... So this one's going to be the limit of 2 as x approaches negative 1 times the limit of x squared as x approaches negative 1 minus the limit of 5 as x approaches negative 1 times the limit of x the limit of x as x approaches negative 1 plus the limit of 1 as x approaches negative 1. We're not done yet because this one's an x squared. This is a power, so we can still use the power rule for this. Okay, so we can then write that as 
times the limit of x as x approaches negative 1 squared so now we're ready the limit of 2 as x approaches negative 1 2 is a constant so that's just 2 and then you have times the limit of x as x approaches negative 1 so again the limit of x will be whatever that value is that value is negative 1 so that's negative 1 and then squared outside so then minus the limit of 5 well 5 is a constant so 5 times the limit of x as x approaches negative 1 again that is negative 1 plus the limit of 1 1 is a constant so that's just going to be 1 negative 1 squared is 1 1 times 2 is 2 um, the negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 and then plus 1 so that's gonna give us 2 plus 5 plus 1 equals 8 so therefore the limit of 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 equals 8 now as you may have observed we had to undergo we had to use the limit theorems here so you have three serious um, three serious lines okay um, but if you look closely we can actually make a shortcut from here from there to here okay and basically what we did was we just copied the constants and then for the excess we just replaced that with negative one right so that's just basically what happened and so when when you are asked to show this as part of your solution then you have to show this but if not then you don't have to you can just simply proceed here by simply plugging in that value for x and that's it you will get exactly here evaluate the limit of x over x minus 1 as x approaches 2 so again here we can break this up so this is a quotient so we're going to use the quotient theorem the quotient rule and so we can write that as the limit of x um, as x approaches 2 divided by the limit of x minus 1 as x approaches 2 okay now the denominator is a difference of uh, a difference between x and, and 1 so we can still further break that down um, so that's limit of x as x approaches 2 divided by the limit of x as x approaches 2 minus the limit of 1 as x approaches 2 okay so then that gives us so limit of x as x approaches 2 is 2 okay divided by the limit of x as, as x approaches 2 again is 2 and then the limit of 1 since 1 is a constant so it's just gonna be 1 okay so then that gives us 2 divided by 2 minus 1 is 1 so that gives us 2 so the limit of x over x minus 1 as x approaches 2 is positive 2.
Now, again, as you may have observed, we can skip this step or these steps right here and go directly from here to there. Okay, so what happened there? We just replaced basically replaced x with 2, right? So look at that. So x replaced with 2. The 1 is just copied, and that's it. So if this is not required, then you don't have to use that. But if the problem asks you to include this one in your solution, then you have to do that, okay? Evaluate the limit of the square root of x squared plus 1 as x approaches 4. So this one has a square root, so we can use the radical root theorem for limits. So we can write this as the square root of the limit of x squared plus 1 plus 1 as x approaches 4 okay and since this is a this is an addition right here we can apply the addition rule so that's the square root of the limit of x um, of x squared so that's x squared plus the limit of 1 as x approaches 4 so okay now since this is a power so we can still use the power rule for that one so then that will give us square root of the limit of x as x approaches 4 and then squared okay that's the power rule and then plus limit of 1 as x approaches 4 so that will give us the square root of so the limit of x again the limit of x as um, as x approaches 4 is 4 right so that's 4 and then you have a squared so that's 4 squared so that's 4 squared plus the limit of 1 again since that's a constant so that's just 1 now we can continue so that's the square root of 4 squared is 16 plus 1 is 17 okay so that's it so the limit of the square root of x squared plus 1 as x approaches 4 is the square root of 17. Okay. Again, as you can see, we don't have to do this, right? We can take a shortcut from here to there. So basically what happened was we replaced x with 4. Look at that. So that's x replaced with 4. And that's it. So if this is not required, then you don't have to show that. If that's required, then you have to. So that's why you still have to learn that one.